I felt led today to share about resting in God. Uh, it's God's will for all of us to have rest in Jesus. Please turn to Isaiah 30. I'll read verses 15 and 16 of Isaiah 30. For thus the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel has said, in repentance and rest you'll be saved, in quietness and trust is your strength. But you were not willing, and you said, no, for we will flee on horses, therefore you shall flee, and we will ride on swift horses, therefore those who pursue you shall be swift. I was challenged recently because I've noticed that a lot of times when I'm burdened with something for an extended period of time that I can tend to lean on my own strength and start trying to come up with a lot of ways out of it. And I'll pray, but in the back of my mind, I sort of can have a, a, a plan B. I need swift horses. I need, uh, I need to run. I need to do something in my own power. And, uh, but I've seen, though, that our main fight shouldn't be these outward schemes and plans. Our fight should be inwardly. And my main fight shouldn't be to fix everything and solve everything in my own power, but to fight, to make sure that whatever I'm going through, I, my attitude is right, that my heart is right. And I think a lot of times I've seen that I can have it backwards, where my main fight is outer and not inner, and to be scheming of things and... Um, but I see that this verse says that it's in repentance and rest that is, that's the, the salvation there, the, the trusting in the Lord, the rejoicing in the Lord and repenting of my own sins, focusing on cleansing myself. That's the, that's the thing. That's how to fight. Um, that's what I, that's what should my, my main focus should be. And if I take care of that, then, then I can rest. And I saw another verse in second Chronicles 20, It says in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17, you need not fight this battle. Station yourselves, stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. So he was talking to Jehoshaphat. And, uh, and I see how a lot of times uh, I can um, be so focused on not resting in the Lord, but uh, I need to fight, I need to fight, I need to fight. And definitely there are times when the Lord wants, uh, needs us to do, say this word, take this action. But most of the time I've seen, I think I've seen to have a quiet rest in the Lord. And my natural tendency is got to do something. But the Lord has just spoke this word to my heart, given me, you don't need to fight this battle. Station yourself and rest in the Lord. Trust in him. And uh, definitely with regard to sin, I should always be resisting and fighting. But with regard to a lot of these, all these outward circumstances, most more often than not, the, the word is station yourself, rest, pray, and watch the Lord work in it. Uh, and so, um, yeah, it's just this rest. I feel the Lord helping me with, and I wanted to share a few things about resting in the Lord today and three things. I'll just sum them up. The first is from God's point of, from God's part is rest. He, he gives his presence with us. And that's where the rest has to come from, from his side. He has given us himself. And that is the, the main thing that should give me rest is his presence with me. He's all, there all the time. I can't imagine the disciples were ever at unrest when Jesus was with them. <laughs> um, uh, but from our part, I think two things come from my side. And I, I take it from Hebrews four. I think the two things are faith and obedience or surrender faith and surrender. And so just regarding the first one of God's presence with me, I, I know that we, we quote Romans eight twenty eight a lot, which has been an anchor for us that all things will work for our good. If we're loving God and, and aiming to be like Jesus. Um, and that's a great comfort, but it's not the only comfort the Bible gives us. The Bible also says that he's with us in the meantime, until everything is worked out. Uh, at the end of for my good so it's not just in the end will it work out and be good but right now it's good because he's with me hebrews 13 5 be content with what you have because he himself said i'll never leave you nor forsake you 
And the context of that verse is talking about money. Be content with what you have. Let your character be free from love and money. But I think it even means be content with your circumstances uh, because he said, I'll never leave you. And last night, my son, he, he was a little scared to go to sleep. So I said, uh, okay, I'll sit with you in the dark there for a little while. And half an hour later, he was still awake. I don't know if he wasn't tired or something, but he was, he was scared if he was alone. I couldn't leave him there. I couldn't say, okay, I'm going now. I knew that I, it just wouldn't work. Um, but I needed to get up for something. So I told him, I'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, and so he said, okay. And he was okay with it because he knew I was nearby and I was coming back. And I, when I came back, he was sleeping. And so the funny thing is, I wasn't there earlier and I wasn't there at that time, but he had rest. And what's the difference? It's because he had a promise uh, and the knowledge that I was there. I was nearby, even though he couldn't see me, he had a promise. And he knew that it was just true. Dad's coming back and he's nearby. He's not going to leave me alone. Uh, that's the difference. And, uh, and I think that is, uh, I've really neglected Hebrews 13, five as my promise and anchor of rest that should be there. And I see that I really have to see that, uh, that is, that should be my, God is with me all the time and he's not leaving me. I, I think a lot of people are going through struggles and they, a lot of people probably think if I just had somebody, <laughs> if I just had somebody with me to suffer through this with me, could sympathize with me, uh, then that changes everything. But God is there. He's the one. He's there the whole time. He's been there since the beginning. And uh, just some examples for, for those of us that have struggled with public speaking. I remember being in high school, just terrified of it. But then one time there was a project where I had a partner. I wasn't nervous at all going up to public speak when there was one person with me because you're not alone. Uh, maybe you have a big work project and there's a deadline. There's a lot of pressure. If you have a partner on it working with you, it changes everything. Uh, your two-year-old child runs out of the house and is going down the street. Uh, it's a pretty scary and fearful thing. But if your spouse is with the child, that changes everything. Uh, there's a, a man who lives alone and he has a drug addiction. His life is on the line and it's a really scary situation. But if there, let's say he has a brother who really loves him and he says, you know what, I'm going to come live with you until we get this worked out, then that changes everything. And I see that when someone's with you who loves you and has the power to help, then that really changes everything. And rest can be there um, because you're not alone. It doesn't mean the situations aren't hard or painful, but it means that um, you're alone and there's hope and you can have rest even before the problem is done. And so I see that's what God's promise gives. Uh, the promise that he's with us all the time, no matter who we are, he's, he's there. Uh, good, uh, good parents. They, they'll always help their kids get out of things that if their kids are suffering in something. If they have a splinter, the parent takes the splinter out and right away it's done. You don't even feel the pain anymore. So sometimes trials are like that. We ask God for help. He's, yeah, she'll take it away. But then other times there are things that we have to endure for some time that last longer. Like, for example, let's say our child has some really serious problem in their teeth and they need a root canal. The parent can't solve the problem that quick and they need deep surgery because the problem is a lot deeper than a splinter. And so what does a good parent do in that moment? They put their arm around their child and say, we'll get through it. Don't worry. Uh, and I see that that's what God does for us. Sometimes our problem is much deeper uh, than we realize. I think a lot of my trials I've seen are because myself and my sin is deeper than I think it is. And so the problem, the trial just has to, the suffering sometimes has to last longer than I wish it would, uh, because God has to root a lot of things out of me, but I see that God's there with me. He's not leaving me alone in it. And so, um, I, I, that has been just the first, the, the first hope, the th first thing that was on my heart that don't forget that God is always with you. And, uh, and so that's what God does for us to have rest. He gives us his presence and then from our side to, to have the rest, this, this total rest, like picturing like Jesus on the boat. That was what his life was like inwardly all the time, uh, where we can have rest. I think Hebrews four gives us two requirements <laughs> that it, even a lot of Christians, they may have Jesus, but why are so many at unrest? And in Hebrews chapter four, verse one says, uh, let us fear if while a promise remains of entering rest, any one of you may seem to come short of it. But then 
in verse two, it says they, they didn't, it was not united by faith by those who heard. So that's why they didn't get rest. He was talking about the Israelites. And then verse six, so faith is number one. And then in verse six, it says they failed to enter because of disobedience. And so I think I, and I've seen this true, true in my life, faith and obedience together, that's equals rest. Uh, faith plus obedience equals rest. And I, I think I can, I can paraphrase it. I like to say surrender, surrendering to the Lord's will, uh, whatever it is, is, is rest. And I've seen that truth where I, if I trust the Lord and I submit and I have a total um, death to my own will, the rest can be there. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, a lot of, this is one of the most famous verses in the Bible. I think it might've been, um, I heard somebody say this was the most quoted verse by Christians recently. Uh, but Jesus talks about rest here. Uh, and we, we usually paraphrase it like this, come to me and I'll give you rest. Jesus said, that's how probably most Christians paraphrase it. But um, they don't read after it what it says. He says, you have to take my yoke. <laughs> And why are so many millions of Christians and so few are at rest? I think because so few have taken the yoke. And what does it mean to, to pick up, to take Jesus' yoke? It means to drop our own yoke. And what is our own yoke? I think it's our will. To our, there's no harder taskmaster than our own desires and our own will. Uh, that's such an evil, demanding, hard taskmaster, our own will. Anybody that's tried to satisfy it will see there's no end to it. <laughs> Uh, there's no end to trying to please ourselves, uh, and the, but, but if we totally give up and say, Lord, I don't need any of my desires met anymore. Your will be done. That's all I want to live for now. Then we see, wow, Jesus will is he's so easy on me. My living for myself was so heavy <laughs> living for Jesus is so light. Uh, and that's where the rest comes when we really die to self when we, but the trust has to be there too. He wants both that both together to trust that the Lord is there. And when I see, when I see that both of, when I have both of those to say, Lord, I trust you, you work everything out, but I also, you don't have to work it out how I want it. You work it out in whatever way you want. I die to my own will and I trust you. You have control of my life now. That's where the, the rest comes. Um, otherwise you have one or the other. It's not really, um, it's not the faith won't, the rest won't be there. And for example, I've seen that if I have, uh, faith, but no surrender, then that's really, it, it's basically like saying, Lord, I'm hoping in you, please do this or that, but I haven't given up my own will. So I'm really, it's really the prosperity gospel saying, Lord, I have, I trust you to do what I want. If I don't have the second, you know, that's really, it's the prosperity gospel. It's faith in faith, not faith in God. It's not trusting in a good father. It's faith is not a magic formula to put our trust in. Um, faith is our, our view of God as a good father. And so when I have that obedience, surrender, the rest can come. Uh, but the, and then on the other side, you just say you're a good father to, um, I want to give everything over to you, Lord, um, obey obedience and trust together in one. But sometimes the, the pain of a burden can last a long time, maybe even years. And so for surrendering and we're trusting the Lord, Sometimes I can feel pretty heavy. Uh, ha have you ever been praying for something for a long, long time, maybe years, and the situation looks worse <laughs> two years later than after you started praying? <laughs> uh, I have. And, um, and the Lord gave me a verse for that, which was my answer in uh, Habakkuk chapter three. And <clears throat> sometimes when when you're having a problem or a struggle, the Lord speaks a verse to you and you're like, that's it. The Lord did that for me with this passage. It says in Habakkuk 3, 17, though the fig tree should not blossom and there be no fruit on the vines, though the, the yield of the olive should fail and all the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I'll exult in the Lord. I'll rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He has made my feet like hinds feet. He makes me walk on my high places for the choir director on my stringed instruments, singing it, <laughs> say, I'm going to sing. Uh, and it's like, I've been praying for this for years and it looks, the situation looks worse <laughs> now. How is that? Uh, but to say, 
you don't have an answer yet, but I'll, I'll choose to exult in the Lord. And that was a word for me to, to say what faith, what a faith it takes that you can have more faith when the situation looks worse. Uh, that is really pleasing to the Lord because that's exactly what Abraham, the, the father of those who were in the faith had when it said he became older and older and his body was dead. He grew in faith. He was, he had even more hope. And so to say, so I saw, yeah, Lord, I've prayed for this for so long. The situation looks even worse, but I'll exult in you. You're with me. And there's no outward fruit on the vines. The tree looks worse than before, but you're the God of my salvation. Um, <clears throat> And, and that's helped me to say, I'll rejoice in you. And definitely the circumstances may, may look like that situations and circumstances may look to be getting worse, but that's outwardly, but inwardly the, I think the principle is, is different where inwardly, we don't have to go backwards. Our situation may go backwards, but inwardly our inward life doesn't have to go backwards. And the Bible says the outer man is decaying. In other words, Yeah, definitely. There's one situation. Every one of us, our situation is getting worse and that's our health. (laughs) Eventually our health is going to fail. Every year is going to get worse, but inwardly. um, And I've seen this to be totally true. Even though a lot of situations seem to get worse, there's one situation that only improves if we're walking with Jesus and that's our inward life with him. And so I've seen that to be true. And I, what a joy that is to know that 10 years from now we'll be even and better in Jesus. I don't know whether my health will be better in 10 years, probably not, <laughs> but my life with Jesus will definitely be better if I, if I remain in him. Uh, and so that's, that's helped me to, to say, yeah, there's no fruit on the vine, but that's not a problem. Um, and your will be done Lord. And to pray the prayer, Lord, I don't know how much longer this burden will last. I'll keep praying. Sometimes there are deep burdens that I believe are the Lord's will to answer over a long period of time. Some, sometimes suffering or trials are like a a single battle in Canaan. And sometimes trials are like Canaan itself where it's progressive and it takes a long time. Uh, And so I've seen that I should, it's helped me to pray this prayer, Lord, uh, grant the answer in your time and give me the strength in the meantime. So so your will be done. I I believe I'm going to cling to the hope and I'm going to trust you for strength in the meantime. I'm dropping my yoke of what the outcome needs to be, what the timing needs to be. Uh, I'm done with all of my own will. I want your yoke. Um, and that's where the rest comes. So uh, it's, it's God's will for all of us to be living a life of rest in Jesus. And uh, if we have a hope and a faith in God with the, the obedience to drop our own will, then uh, we can definitely enter into his rest.